Welcome back. So uh, the next uh, talk is from uh, Jean-Michel Marin. So Jean-Michel is the head of the mathematics department of the University of Montpellier. Uh, he has co-authored uh, numerous works on variation statistics, Monte Carlo methods, application to um, population genetics, and he is also an expert on ABC, approximate variation computation. So we'll talk about us how ABC could benefit from the fact bias theory. Uh, a big challenge. Thank you, Benjamin, for, for this very nice introduction, and thank you, Pascal and Francis, also for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to be to be here and to try to make some comment connection between some methodological and applied works and uh, the world of Pac Bayesian uh, works. So uh, I'm supposed to be an expert in approximate Bayesian computation techniques, and uh, I try to. I will try today to explain to, to you how, how it works and how this method can take benefit from the Pac Bayesian world. Uh, so this is a joint work with some numerous colleagues who participate to part of this work. This is a case of Pierre Pudlow from Marseille, of Louis Renal, which is a PhD of mine, Arnaud Estou, which is a molecular ecologist in Montpellier, and I take a lot of benefit to discuss with biologists and molecular ecologists because they are very clever and use statistics better than us. Even. And also Christian Robert, which is a professor at Paris Dauphine and also at Warwick. I think about Judith, Natesh, Natesh Pillai, and Judith Rousseau who also contribute to some part of this work. So thank you for all, all, all these colleagues for working with me. So uh, I will consider the Bayesian paradigm and I will consider the case where the likelihood function is expensive or impossible to calculate. So I, I, I am in the intractable likelihood paradigm. And in that case, it is extremely difficult for, to sample from the posterior distribution. The posterior distribution is a standard Bayesian, is a product of the prior multiplied by the likelihood, and I cannot evaluate this likelihood, so it's extremely difficult to get uh, some uh, simulation or to get some Bayesian estimate because I, am, I, I do not have access to the posterior distribution. Uh, there is two typical situations in which this is the case. The first one is uh, the intractability is due to the presence of a latent variable. You have a big latent variable which, which live in a very large space and you are not able to integrate this latent variable which is called U in this slide. This is typically the case in some population genetics application, in population genetics model, and the, the typical models in this field is the coalescence process, and for the coalescence process, we only observe the end of the tree, and you have to integrate it out all over the tree, and it's a very big space, and it's almost impossible to integrate this latent variable, and so the likelihood is intractable. In such a situation, there is a lot of Statistical methodology can be applied, the EM algorithm, the Gibbs sampling, some pseudo marginal MCMC methods, variational approximation. But in some cases, and for some specific model, all this type of approximation fail to give good results. And ABC is an alternative. The other situation is when the, numer the normalizing constant of the likelihood itself is intractable. So there is no latent variable in this case, but the normalizing constant of the likelihood in tractable. This is typically the case for Markov random field, for instance. And in such a case, we have also some typical pseudo marginal MCMC method approximation and algorithm which are designed to avoid this normalizing constant problem. Typical, this is MCMC algorithm where you plug within the calculation of the acceptance rate and unbiased estimator to avoid. Uh, this uh, intractability of the normalizing constant, and there is also in this case a lot of variational approximation. So, for once again, I will concentrate on this part, this latent variable, but I will introduce an alternative to all this method to uh, deal with the intractability of the likelihood. Here, ABC is a technique that only requires being able to sample from the likelihood, so you only need to be able to sample from the likelihood, and 
these techniques come from the population genetics community and uh, science about 15 years and population geneticists uh, still significantly contribute to the methodological development of, of, of the method and uh, with question and order we work a lot with population genetics uh, people and uh, if we, we work on, on this ABC we, we have to be very great, grateful to our biologist colleague because the first time they introduced uh, as a method, we, we was very spectacle about uh, the possibility, but uh, at the end, 10 years later, after we see, okay, it can work, it can give good results. So I will introduce some methodological aspect of ABC. Uh, our ABC Random Forest proposal here, and uh, I will discuss connection, possible connection between ABC and pack bias. Uh, I will try to say something interesting in the last part, I am not very sure to be uh, uh, to say something very clear, but let, let, let's see, we can discuss about that. Okay, let's, let's start with uh, the methodological as aspect of ABC and the first algorithm, which is a likelihood free rejection sampler. This is an extremely simple algorithm. You, some, you, you have a proper prior distribution, so you generate a parameter value from the prior, you generate a pseudo-observation coming from the model for the corresponding parameter value, and you compare this pseudo-observation to the observed using summary statistics called by the function eta and a distance d, and if this distance is small enough, according to a threshold which is called epsilon, you say that the corresponding theta value is approximately distributed from the posterior distribution. So it's a very simple and intuitive uh, algorithm which consists to simulate a pseudo data compared to the observed and see if uh, the two uh, are uh, close enough. Okay? Uh, there is, within this algorithm, there is right now a uh, free type of approximation. And the first approximation is a standard one. You have an accept reject algorithm, so you have the first Monte Carlo standard approximation. Okay. You have a second one, which is that uh, this summarization process, uh, it's very difficult to use some sufficient statistics, so you have a loss of information within this summarization step. And the, the last and third type of approximation using this algorithm is that epsilon is not equal to zero, if epsilon is equal to zero and if it's a true distance, the theta come exactly from the posterior if the uh, summary statistic is sufficient, but epsilon equal to zero is almost impossible, it takes too much time, so it's with probability zero for continuous uh, variable. So you have the third approximation, which corresponds to this epsilon uh, thing. Okay, so this epsilon reflects the tension between computability and accuracy. If epsilon tends to infinity, you get simulation from the prior. If, if epsilon tends to zero, we get simulation from, from the posterior. And uh, here is the ABC target distribution, where this is the set A, capital A, is the acceptance set, set for the seed. Yeah, but, yeah sorry, I just, <coughs> just had a question on the previous slide. Um, so you're implicitly assuming that all of your distributions are continuous, right? Because if you have discrete contributions, you could easily set up some to zero. Not really easily, because depending on the, the, how far the prior is from, from the likelihood, you, you can also, even if it's possible to have a, a, a mass different from zero for exactly uh, pseudo data equal to the observed, it will take a while to get equality, okay? So even in that case, it's, it's extremely difficult and you have to wait too long. So, so you would still need an epsilon which is not zero. Yes, sure, sure. Even, even, even in, in the discrete case, you, you need an epsilon which is strictly greater than zero. Yeah, but uh, let's see. In fact, there is no epsilon at the end. You will see. So, okay, this is the ABC target. Here, I have this very nice and standard toy example from Richard Wilkinson. And, uh, give a very nice tutorial in NIPS in 2013. So look, you have a wide given theta and this is a likelihood. This is a Gaussian of dimension one with a cubic function for the mean 
and a correlative function for the variance is you take a prior which is uniform for theta between minus 10 and 10, you observe y equal to 2, and you say, okay, the distance is a standard L1 distance, why not? And look what happened. So here is a simulated theta, here is a simulated y, <coughs> the red line corresponds to the observed y equal to 2, and the two dashed it red line correspond to epsilon, the point you accept. And here you have the difference between the true and the ABC approximation, which is a kernel density estimator based on the accepted point within the bound here. And if epsilon is equal to 7.5, you have this approximation. If epsilon decreases to 5, you have this, this one right now. And if you continue to decrease the value of epsilon, the uh, approximation come closer to the true. Here, for epsilon equal to 1, you have uh, uh, an approximation which is very uh, close to the true posterior distribution. So that's the point. Uh, okay, in fact, practitioner does not use any epsilon uh, before uh, running the simulation and, and, and do this. They create what they call a reference table. So they simulate the value of theta using the prior, they simulate the pseudo uh, observation using the model, and they calculate the distance. Then they order the distance here, and they return the, the value of the theta that correspond to the n smallest distance. Okay? So capital N correspond to a proportion of capital M simulation from the reference table. So you have simulated a table here, and you have order according to the distance and take the smallest. This is a KNN approximation of uh, the posterior expectation if you, if you take the empirical expectation over this, this, this theta value. So this is just a car nearest neighbor approximation, and epsilon corresponds to a quantile of the distance here. Okay? You get it. So epsilon is not fixed is determined by uh, the, the data you simulate, which is called the reference table. Okay, so this is unfiled in this paper of Gerard View and, and co-authors in Anal de l'IHP. This method is intuitive, simple to implement, embarrassingly parallelizable, but you have a curse of dimensionality. Most of the simulation are at the boundary of the space as the number of summary statistics increase. You better than me, I think, what curse of dimensionality is. So you have typically this curse, and this is the reason why we summarize the data. Another point is that there is two views of, the, of this ABC approximation. The first one comes from Wilkinson in his paper. It shows that ABC is exact, but for a, for a different model. If you add a noise to your model, with a level of noise which is associated to the value of epsilon, you get as posterior distribution the ABC target. So it's an, uh, an exact algorithm for a noisy version of your model. First interpretation. The second one, which is due to Bloom in the paper in JAZA, implies that ABC is a kernel smoothing approximation of the light load function. Look, you have this here coming. This is the ABC target. This is a rectangular uh, standard kernel, and you can modify this rect rectangular kernel by introducing another kernel with a window which can be called epsilon or some other. And in fact, look, the prior distribution can be put outside of the integral, and you have this integral which co corresponds to a kernel approximation of the likelihood. You take the product of the likelihood by your kernel and you, and you integrate. So, this suggests to modify uh, the ABC algorithm and uh, instead of using a rectangular kernel, you can use some other sort of kernel, uh, exponential, Gaussian, uh, Epanashnikov, or what you want. So, you, this view of ABC and this one uh, allows to introduce some other ABC algorithm. Okay, you have also um, a lot of work on more efficient algorithm simulated all the particles from the prior distribution is very inefficient and there is various sequential Monte Carlo algorithms that have been constructed as an alternative 
and there is a lot of work, so including uh, some, some we developed with, with Marc Beaumont and Pierre Pidlou, Mohamed Sedki and Christian and Rosa and Jamari. And the key idea is to decompose a difficult problem of sampling from this target ABC when epsilon is small, it's very difficult to sample from this, into a series of simpler subproblems. At time zero, you sample from this distribution with a large value of epsilon, and then you use this approximation corresponding to this large epsilon as prior for the next step, and you decrease the value of epsilon. This is a second chart Monte Carlo idea, and uh, it can work quite well, but as I will explain later, it's extremely difficult to calibrate. So, let's see. Uh, you have also, uh, due to Marjoram and co-authors in NAS, uh, likelihood free MCMC version of the sampler, uh, which correspond to also a pseudo uh, marginal MCMC things. Okay, this is completely associated to the pseudo marginal in CMC where there is a plugging of an embedded estimator in some sense uh, of uh, the likelihood, and when you take this ratio, you are exact in some sense for, for, for an augmented space. Okay, uh, something which is done a lot also uh, in ABC paradigm is some regression adjustment and, and, and machine learning right. Uh, Beaumont in genetics proposed to uh, M co-authors and with Balding and Zhang, it's a very clever paper, to use local regression adjustment of the parameter value. So they take a large value of epsilon and then they adjust this value of, of, of ex, uh, epsilon using a model, okay, a model which is local linear. And they modify the value of epsilon according to this model. So this is a way to uh, taking into account the weight and introducing a sort of non-parametric uh, estimator, local non-parametric estimator of the posterior expectation. And Bloom and co-authors with Olivier Francois extend this result in statistics and computing in 2010 uh, with a scalastic model and feed forward neural networks to uh, uh, avoid the, the linearity assumption of, of the local uh, linear regression adjustment of Bohm. There is also a, a lot of work on the selection of summary statistics. There is three types of selection you can do. The selection of summary statistics is a crucial step. The summary statistics should not be in a very large uh, dimension, but uh, should have our information about the parameter we would like to estimate here. So there is a best subset selection method which are based on criteria like to sufficiency or entropy. There is some projection method, the semi-automatic ABC uh, a method of Fernand and Prangel in GOSSB, which is a dis discussion paper. And you have also some regression, regression techniques, uh, read regression for Bloom and Co-authors and and lasso for Emma Solnier and, and, and co-authors here. So, some different way to select or to weight the summary statistics using standard uh, statistical things for the regularization, using a, a, a nice idea in, in projection, but which is very difficult to, to, um, to do in practice, let's say, this one. This, the idea of this one is to say, okay, the the best way to summarize, if you would like to estimate the posterior expectation, is the posterior expectation itself. Okay, so that's, that's clear. So do a first ABC approximation, and then use this first ABC approximation as a projection of your uh, simulated data set. Okay? But this is based on the fact that the first ABC approximation works well. Instead of that, uh, it does not work quite well. And if the first ABC approximation works well, you don't need all this machinery. Suppose that the problem is resolved, the problem is resolved. So it's, it's not in practice so, so, so durable. You have also some possibility to do some model choice within this paradigm. And this is the same, so we are in the Bayesian paradigm, so we probabilize the model space, so we have a prior distribution in the model space. So you simulate a, pr a model index using the prior, you simulate a corresponding parameter using prior, which is not 
now indexed by a model, and you simulate a data set according to the likelihood which corresponds to the model you just simulate when you choose a model here. And you calculate the distance, you order the distance, so you have a summarization here, and this summarization should have some information which respect to the model choice problem, not to the parameter inference. And you order the distance and you return the, uh, the and the smallest uh, index, and then you can take a majority rule here within the index to select the model. So we are in a classification problem. You create your own table where you have model index and summary statistics, and you apply a can nearest neighbor approximation to estimate uh, the model posterior probability and to select the model. So that's the point. Once again, uh, 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 a can nearest neighbor. Uh, Approximation. So it, it can work pretty well if uh, eta y is a sufficient statistics for the model choice problem. It's quite difficult to have a sufficiency a condition on the model and not on the parameter. Okay, so in practice it's not so easy to find uh, statistics or information to discriminate between model and you can have some surprise uh, here. So it can work quite well, but if not, we published this paper in NAS to, to, to do a warning, be careful, uh, summarization uh, uh, have to be taken into account, uh, you have to take care of the way you summarize with your data, but it's, it's not easy to have a summarization of your data that have some information to discriminate between model, and at the end in, in the, the series B paper in, in GRSS here, we, we give some um, sufficient condition for which this is not in the, exactly in the ABC paradigm. We give condition for which uh, the posterior probability converge to the best model in terms of the kullback level divergence. So also, also in a, if the true model is not in the set of model, uh, when you condition on a, a, a summary statistic which is not sufficient for the model index. So we have some condition and we apply this condition to our uh, typical population genetic example and you are able to, to, to see that it, it can work. Okay, so the, there is some, some year of, of controversy uh, to use or not ABC to select a model, but okay, at the end we have these positive results. Yeah. You can use uh, a not sufficient summary to discriminate between model and, and if you have a lot of data set, uh, uh, we, we have a theorem that, that it can still work. You, you are able to recover, recover the, the true model. Okay. So, we have also investigated some ABC model choice techniques that, that use other machine learning procedures than, uh, than the can nearest neighbor, and this is the first step to, to, to use machine learning within the ABC paradigm. Here, this one. There is a lot of software right now which implements the method. This is a, a set of R package, including ours, which is ABC using random forest here. And there is also some specific tools we are associated uh, to specific class of model. With this R package, you need to have your own simulation. So you have your reference table, and you give the reference table uh, to the to the package to 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 to, to, to get the ABC approximation. Within this one, you have also uh, some simulator included, and we have developed this do-it-yourself ABC software, which perform estimation and model selection for, for a large class of population genetics model, which are based essentially structured uh, coalescent uh, model here. So we have, we have these two uh, two contribution, and so we apply uh, this. ABC technology on Asian ladybug, European honeybee, Drosophila Suzuki, to pygmies population, and, and also to some uh, study on four human population uh, uh, to, to study the out of Africa colonization here. So we are playing on different uh, type of data set. So we have a DNA data set, and we, we, we would like to recover. Uh, the population structure using DNA observed at the present time. Okay, and we would like to recover the population history. That's, that's the goal of this, of this. 
Okay, let's let me give some some front frontline news from population geneticist country, and uh, I can do that because uh, we have a lot of uh, return from uh, molecular ecologists which use the Hawaii ABC, the second version of the Hawaii ABC uh, that has been published in 2014 and has now around 300 citations. So we have a lot of feedback and uh, how it works and works well not working way well. Uh, simulate from the model can be uh, very computationally intensive and, and so paral parallelized algorithm are, 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 are necessary. Okay, that, that's the first point. For, for this class of population genetics model, you need to design an algorithm which can use parallelization in, a, in an easy way. Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, the second one is likelihood is intractable due to the strong and complex dependent structure of the model. Okay, and, and that, that's, a, that's a crucial point. If, if you have some ID data, I think, uh, not in all cases, but in general, you can, you can find better approximations than using approximate Bayesian computation. Okay, so use approximate Bayesian computation when the data set you observe has a very uh, complex structure and you would like to work over this complex structure. For ID data, you have some other set of approximation and for sure the variational and Laplace things can, can, can do a good job in that context. Okay, uh, sequential methods are very difficult to calibrate and do not give re re reproducible results. That's, uh, uh, we found that with, with, with my PhD, Mohamed Setki, and we worked hard, but we are not able to find a way to uh, to use this sequential method uh, and to calibrate, uh, and that the calibration is, is, is are not too data dependent. Okay, that, that's a problem. Well, here, I see a lot of uh, data dependent calibration in deep learning, so we try to avoid that. Okay, uh, not to turn on button uh, for six months to get the results. And that's a problem with this second chance method. Postdoc and the experiment are crucial, but uh, they underestimate uh, the amount of uncertainty. That's, 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 that's typically what we observe. And available techniques to select the summary statistics does not give also uh, reproducible results. So it's, it's, it's a big challenge here. So despite all this work, there is two major difficulties. The first one is that to ensure reliability of the method, the number of simulations should be large, and the choice of the summary statistic is still a problem. Okay, that, that's the two typical points. And, okay, we, we say avoid the cannabis neighbor approximation and, and try to use more modern and clever machine learning tools on this table. That, that's what we, we would like to do, and that's what we have done, and also Kai and, and so some other uh, have done that, I will show you. Exploiting a large number of summary statistics is not an issue for some machine learning method, and our idea is to learn on a huge reference table using uh, random forest. I will explain why uh, random forest in some sense, so in some time. The first is that there is some the theoretical guarantee for sparse problems, there is these two nice papers from Gerard View and co authors one in GMLR, one in the Annals of Statistics, who show some, some, some nice convergence results for sparse problems. And we, we are typically for my population genetic application in sparse problems. We have a big set of summary statistics, and within this big set, only few uh, are related to the problem. And you want to pick up in this big step some guys which are related to the problem. And also correlated, okay, and the forest can do that. Uh, this work stands at the interface between Bayesian inference and machine learning technique, and there is also some, some alternative. You have the alternative of Papa Macarius and Murray, who propose to using mixture density network of Bishop in this paper in NIPS uh, one year ago, okay, here. <laughs> and uh, the, the mixture density network strategy consists in using Gaussian mixture model with parameter calibrated thanks to a neural network. And the idea is to iteratively learn an efficient proposal prior. That's, that's an interesting point. 
approximating the posterior distribution and then use this proposal to train the posterior. So in, in some sense, you localize by learning a prior with a network and then you connect it's a sort of autoencoder of things. Yeah. And then you connect uh, this prior to, 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 get to, um, to train uh, the posterior using also uh, a mixture density network. Okay. There is two, problem, two difficulties associated with this method that the number of mixture components and the number of hidden layers of the network re re require a lot of calibration. And once again, it's, it's very problem specific to specify these two quantities, as we observe. But it can, it, I think uh, works uh, have to be done. In, in, in to give rule to, to calibrate these two quantities and this method can be a, a very competitive for, for the ABC. There is also this paper which is specific to uh, population genetics and ferrants and to a specific class of coalescent process which is by uh, Sheham and, and Yun Sung. Yun Sung is a well-known guy in the population genetics community. Uh, they published a paper in PLOS Computational Biology one year ago. and. Uh, they use deep learning, use a multi layer neural networks to learn a physical based function from the output. The input is the correlated uh, summary statistic to the output, which are the population genetics parameters of interest. I think that the unsupervised pre training using auto encoder is very interesting, but requires a lot of calibration too. And uh, there is also some alternative uh, outside the population genetics community by, by Karl Kramer here, who, who have done, in some sense, some sort which is uh, very close to, to, the, to this uh, here. Okay, so our proposal is to use random forest because we found that random forest does not need its calibration in some sense. We, we use a parameter. Uh, proposed uh, by Bremen in this seminar work and this set of parameters are quite good to, to, for, for a, a very large class of problem and this is the reason why to avoid fine tuning we choose a forest here and so we published this paper uh, for model choice uh, in bioinformatics one year ago. So the input is a reference table involving the model index. So you have the model index and the summary statistics and this is your learning set. So you have simulated your learning set. And the summary statistics are a large collection uh, from scientific uh, theory input to machine learning alternative. You use uh, linear discriminant axis as summary statistics, we use the SVM classifier as summary statistics, a, a, a logistic regression classifier also. So we put all we, we can in the summary here, and then this is generated from this reference table where we get the model index and the summary. Okay? And the output is a random forest to infer the model index. Because to select a model is a classification problem, you have to affect the observed data to a class, a class is a model, and to do that, we simulate your learning set using the Bayesian model, using the prior and, uh, and the likelihood, and then you learn on the table you, you, you have simulated. This is, is extremely simple. Uh, 45 minutes, it's too much perhaps to say something like that, but it's, it's very simple, okay? You can predict uh, the model index, uh, predict the model index is a classification problem, but estimate uh, in a good way the posterior probability is a regression problem. This is the expectation of an indicator function, which is probability. This is a regression and not a classification problem. Regression is more difficult than classification in, in some sense. Eh? And, and, and you cannot directly use the result for the, of the forest, the frequency of tree associated with the majority model is not a proper substitute to the true posterior probability okay, of the selected model. So we will do something else to estimate this posterior probability here. Okay, because the forest has been calibrated to do a classification job and not a regression job. The forest is to classify, not to estimate the probability. Okay, the criteria 
for each node of the forest, the GD index or the entropy, it's not associated to any regression uh, criteria. So the, this forest is not uh, good to, uh, to, to use to estimate. You can do that, but it, it's not good. So you have an alternative. Look at that. This is a selected model using, this is the probability of the selected given the data, uh, and the random come from M. Wrong. You see, M, M. Uh, I do a Bayesian research today. So the random form from M. M, M is Bayesian. I condition on my simulated data set, my reference table, and I condition on the observed. All the random come from M here, okay, in this equation. So you have this. Extremely simple, and then if you are able to estimate this, you are able to estimate this guy, and so we will construct the forest to estimate this expectation, and this is not a classification random forest, but a regression random forest to estimate this expectation. So you compute the value of this here using the out of back classifier to avoid overfitting, here, and to use the same reference table for the two forests, and you train a forest to estimate this, and this is a regression forest on the zero one. So this, this is a zero, zero one. You, you have got the, the good model or not, and you, 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 you train a second forest to estimate this, and you get the estimate of the posterior probability of the selected model, and you use the same reference table because of the out-of-back magic trick to avoid overfitting. Uh, here I have used the out-of-back classifier uh, to uh, decide if this is zero or one. Okay, you have exactly, we have exactly the same uh, type of methodology for regression uh, to estimate parameter for parameter inference. I show you how to select the model using this and we can do the same to estimate a parameter. So the input is a reference table and in the reference table you have right now the parameter value and the summary statistics, and you will learn. So this is a simulation of the reference table. You simulate the, the parameter value from the prior, you simulate the pseudo observed, you summarize, and you have in lines each simulation with correspond parameter value and the colon of the summarization. And the output is some regression random forest <coughs> uh, predictors, not only one to infer. Posterior expectation, quantile variance, and covariances. I, I don't try to estimate the whole posterior. I will design a forest, uh, a random forest, uh, to estimate a specific quantity. If I am interested with uh, posterior expectation, I construct, and that my, my parameter is in dimension D, I construct D regression random forest, one per dimension. If I would like to estimate some quantile in order to have some confidence interval or credible set, we say in Bayesian inference on the parameter, we use a quantile regression forest uh, clever method of Menshausen, and you don't need to simulate new forests compared to the one who uh, has been done to estimate the expectation, because using this one, uh, Menshausen gives a, a a very nice trick to estimate the cumulative distribution function and you have just to inverse this cumulative distribution function and you get all the quantile you need. For the posterior variance, there is no new forest compared to the posterior expectation and you use a out of back trick also and for posterior uh, covariances, you have to design a new forest for which the response variables are the product of out of bag errors. Okay, so for each parameter we would like to estimate, we design a machine learning strategy uh, spe specifically uh, um, for the for the considered problem. We don't try to approximate the whole posterior. We think it's it's too difficult. Okay. Uh, there is one uh, problem we are interested uh, right now on. We construct forest able to estimate everywhere in the space of summary statistics, but we are interested only in one point, the observed data set. I am in a very specific case of learning. I produce my learning set using the Bayesian model, and I just want to predict one point, the observed. Okay, and, and using this forest, I construct a rule, which is a general rule, able to estimate uh, everybody who comes in the machine. 
So right now we try to construct local random forest, and this is a goal of the, my PhD thesis, which is called Google Bernard. And uh, what what we do is within the construction of the tree of the forest at one node, for instance, we take into account of the point we would like to estimate to decide the split of the node between the two uh, children. Okay, this is binary tree with two children, and, and we have a local criteria here uh, right now, but it, it, it's quite difficult. Okay, a few minutes on uh, ABC and PacBiles. There is some work on Bayesian and pac Bayesian frameworks. Eh? Uh, these two frameworks are run from each other. Uh, there is this nice paper of Pascal, Francis and co uh, one year ago, uh, choosing the negative log likelihood as the log function uh, gives that minimizing the pack by spoon is equivalent, equivalent to minimizing the marginal likelihood and this big, big and very interesting connection between the two techniques. I am not in the ABC paradigm, but I will say some words. There is also uh, this uh, paper in Series B, uh, the paper of Chris Holmes and Walker and, and B-Series, they produced this paper in, in 2012, I think, and the paper appears in 2016, so uh, uh, four years of review, so <laughs> perhaps a, a lot of discussion with the Pac Bayesian uh, guys, but it's, it's almost the same as the, uh, as the Bayesian view of the Pac Bayesian paradigm, uh, without uh, an unfizing on bones and things like that, but this is, this is exactly this. And there is, there is this, this very nice methodology when we have a misclassification model, the safe Bayesian uh, says from Peter and Peter speak about that. So this gives big connection, and I think that this safe Bayesian is a good six in some in some sense. It's, it's not far from ABC, so you modify. Your model, uh, when flat prior, in the, uh, the, the likelihood in some sense to get more weight to the prior. And by taking this epsilon in the ABC fashion, we do almost the same. If, if the model is wrong, we enlarge the possible value for the corresponding model by using this threshold like epsilon. So there is right now some work of why ABC can be interesting for misclassification models too. I say. Okay, so. Uh, now, ABC approximation are based on the existence and the use of the generative model. I have a generative model and I use this generative model to simulate my learning set, my reference table. This is in some sense antithetical with the pack bias paradigm where there is no explicit modelization of, of, of the observed data set. Uh, first, first point. Second point, ABC I don't think that ABC approximation is useful when the, likely, the calculation of the likelihood is tractable. I think that if you, are, if you are able to calculate the likelihood, there is more clever approximation than this approximation. So, it's not a good idea, I think, uh, to use ABC as an inferential tool for trying to get uh, simulation from the pack base post pseudo posterior. Uh, I, <laughs> I hear this morning that there is not direct connection between the prior and the posterior in the pack base. I, I really not understand this because I see the pack uh, Bayesian as a pseudo likelihood in some sense, using a prior and then then there is a corresponding posterior, but I, I am a Beotian and uh, totally candid in, in this field. So, uh, and uh, what I can say is, don't use uh, ABC to try to to approximate this back by pseudo posterior. Uh, so, first uh, conclusion: uh, the, the ABC tool, toolbox seems unable to 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 bring any things to the back by framework first. But, on the other hand, uh, I try to convince you today that ABC concerns are machine learning concerns. Okay? 
So, why not try to use backbice learning on the ABC reference table? That, that can be a, a good thing to do here. And contrary to the standard context, we uh, have two specific things. Uh, I repeat, but teaching is it's repeating. Uh, we generate a learning set, and we are only interested to predict one point, the observed data set. And, uh, there is some, some connection, perhaps, and, and some possibility to use some pack Bayesian uh, methodology, especially designed for these things, and, and I see this transductive learning. And in some sense, we would like to do a transductive, transductive sorry, learning for one point. Okay? Perhaps it can be uh, a for, uh, I don't know. Moreover, there is this very nice preprint from uh, Luigi Way, uh, who use uh, and who study the convergence of ABC posterior and the model B specification, and he use, he use concentration inequalities. We see a lot of concentration inequalities this morning, in some sense, and, and he use pack Bayesian analysis, and, and this is uh, he, he gets really interesting and clever results uh, for uh, what two ABC and the MIS specification connected to what I say to Peter uh, here and to say uh, if ABC can be good and the MIS specification using in fact uh, pack Bayesian analysis here. Yeah. So I think this is the most interesting uh, connection uh, here. Uh, and up to the end, so yesterday with Benjamin Pascal in a Chinese restaurant, I got an hidden message within a cake. The message was, sorry, <laughs> this year take comfort in your rituals but be open to new experiences. So I think I should try to use some pack Bayesian results. <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention. There is a lot of connection between these two things, but in some sense, in the frequentist and direct inference, there is a choice of a class of, uh, 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 of model in which the approximation belongs, and there is not this choice here. Okay, in the indirect inf frequentist and direct inference, in some sense, they, they, this is quickly say, yeah, but they choose a class of model in which the approximation belongs. And that, that is not the case here. This, but this is very related. This is highly related. They also use simulation to calibrate the approximation, so in, in some sense, and simulation from the likelihood. So that is in some sense that there is a lot of connection, but uh, it is related, but not, not completely uh, the same thing. Okay, in the interest of time, we should move on to the next speaker. Let's thank Jean-Michel again.